I'd like to call this meeting of the Romulus Board of Education in order December 11th, 2006. Can I have roll call, please? Mrs. Freyer. Present. Ms. Buckley. Here. Mr. Cooter. Present. Ms. Lenasti. Present. Ms. Mr. Minkevich. Here. And who are you, Ms. Roscoe? Ms. Roscoe. <laughs> and Ms. White here. is here. And we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First thing on our agenda is to approve the agenda. Madam Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. Support. I've got a motion by Mr. Mancavage, supported by Ms. Lanasi. Any questions? Oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I guess I was supposed to ask if there's any questions first before we voted. Are there any questions? We're all set. Next is our approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve our minutes of November 27th. Support. Motion by Ms. Buckley, supported by Ms. White. Do we have any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next we have the report of our superintendent, Mr. Weiss. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, first up, Mr. Clark with uh, personnel actions. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Members of the board, there are no personnel actions for this evening. Okay. Rowan right along. <laughs> Um, no, it'd be nice if there were no bills for payment, but bills for payment. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. I'm recommending the board approve the bills submitted for payment from the period November 30th through December 7th, 2006, in the amount of four hundred ninety-five thousand eight hundred thirty-four dollars and sixty-one cents. Too much money, can't do it. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, we have a motion to approve the bills. So moved, Madam Chair. Support. Supported by, um, any questions? Supported by Ms. Buckley, supported by Mr. Kuderick. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Bills are paid. Okay. Next, um, I know we've had so several discussions in my short tenure here about uh, some of our board policies and uh, some of the shortcomings of those board policies, namely that we don't, we don't have policies on a lot of issues. Um, our central office administration met with two organizations. We met with um, MASB and we have Bob Eversoll who's here to share some information from MASB with you. We also met with Neola um, and it's our recommendation at this point and we shared our um, our recommendation with the policy committee that um, that we begin um, a process with MASB toward developing a more comprehensive board policy and also um, administrative rules to go along with that. It's a very comprehensive program. Many uh, many of our peer districts in Wayne County um, use MASB for their board policy and um, based upon the input that we got from our uh, policy committee, uh, we invited Bob here tonight to give you kind of a short presentation he brought a folder with. So with that said, I'm gonna turn the floor over to Bob. And uh, the microphone's right there and uh, make sure it's on. Okay, and you should be good to go, Bob. Thank you for coming tonight. My name is Bob Ebersole and I'm an attorney. I work for the Michigan Association of School Boards, which is your association. It's a pleasure for me to be here this evening and introduce you to briefly and try to answer any questions that you may have and to briefly outline the way that we do what we do in the policy department. You know that the association provides many services. Oh, it was the other arm button. <laughs> <laughs> More to it than meets you. I see. Okay. I took it at its word. Power. That's what we needed. Okay. <clears throat> I am an attorney. I've also been a police officer. I've also served as an assistant prosecuting attorney in the County of Ingham for 20 years. When I retired from the Ingham County Prosecutor's Office, I immediately was hired by MASB to work in the policy department. 
Of course, my background up to that point was absolutely qualifying me for that kind of a position. Well, there's one thing I haven't told you yet, and that is for seven years I was a member of the Holt Michigan Board of Education, serving as various officers including vice president, secretary, and treasurer of the board during that seven-year period. That, in fact, is the hook that got me the job that I currently hold today. Our policy department within the association consists of a director, Dr. Bill Sharfy, myself, the assistant director, and the other full-time member of our staff is Randy Irola, who is our administrative assistant. We, had, from time to time, employ a legal intern, a law student, from one of the law schools in the Lansing area. We have two, Cooley and the Michigan State University College of Law. And at the current time, we have an MSU law student working for us, Ms. Kim Kraft. <coughs> and Kim will be with us, hopefully, through next fall. We also, from time to time, employ an adjunct, a part-timer, to assist us. Right now, our primary part-time person is located in the Sault Ste. Marie area. She helps us with the northern Michigan people that work with us on policy service. She is a retired administrator from the Waverly, Michigan School District. She and her husband retired, moved up to the Sioux, live on an island in the St. Mary's River, which is sometimes inaccessible in the wintertime. So from time to time, she can't help us, but most of the time she's very able and very willing to assist us with Upper Peninsula and Northern Michigan things. I'm going to focus on three particular services that MASB provides because we are recommending to your administration and now to you that you consider carefully these three services. We think they would be the best for you. We're going to focus then first on the product that we turn out, second on the process that we use. The three services that I'll be referring to are called the Michigan Comprehensive Service, the OPUS or Online Policy Update Service, and the Power Project, the Policies on the Web as an Educational Resource. MASB takes the position that policy charts the course and sets the goals for the district. Policy statements are statements of principle. It tells the administration and the public what the board expects to happen. It leaves the administration room to bring those steps into practice. Policy is the board's responsibility. Our package includes rules, which are procedures. Often these are found in handbooks, such as staff handbooks or even student handbooks. The rules bring policy into practice. The rules are detailed ed instructions developed by the administration, and they <coughs> should be reviewed by the board, but not necessarily adopted by the board. However, there are exceptions. Some boards feel that certain parts of the rule package need to be adopted and owned by the board. That's fine. That's a judgment call. But general rule, boards review rules, discuss them with administrators, but do not enact those rules become they, because they become yours and nobody else can, can amend them. And sometimes rules need to be changed on the fly. And your administration needs that kind of flexibility to respond to changing conditions. Our policy manual then contains three basic things. Bylaws, which are the board's policies or statements about how it governs <coughs> itself. Bylaws are required by statute. Statute says school boards have to have them. Statute doesn't tell us, however, what bylaws you have to have. We think we've developed a pretty comprehensive set of bylaws. Then we have policies. The rest of it is primarily policies. And some policies, not all, but many policies, are followed by a suggested rule. We encourage boards to make changes to those policies or to delete some of those policies that don't apply. There may be conditions that we address with other districts that you don't face. And if that's the case, and there's a particular policy that looks that way when you start reading through our materials, we ask that you tell us that you need to delete it, and we'll do so. There may be some minor amendments or adjustments to the language that you feel more comfortable with than the language that we use. That's fine, too. As long as it doesn't step on the law, we're not going to, to encourage you to <coughs> continue with ours if yours will work. 
There are nine sections in the book, including the bylaws. We cover other topics such as business, fiscal management, instructional programs, students, and so forth. So it's a comprehensive collection that will, in fact, serve you well, we think, many years into the future. Now, policy is very heavily influenced by law, and I only want to very briefly touch on the fact that law sometimes requires policy. And if, in fact, the law, the statute says you have to have a policy, we'll tell you, you have to have this. This is required by law. Sometimes, however, law only suggests that a policy may be needed. And in those cases, we may tell you that while we recommend it to you, it is not absolutely necessary that you have a policy on that topic. An example of a mandated policy is in your folders. It's the social security, I'm sorry, that's not. An example of a suggested policy is in your folder. It's a suggestion from the state government about school bus and the uh, uh, policy that the state board of education feels is required now so that school buses are checked at the end of the route to make sure we don't have a sleeping student in the back end. And so they have recommended that school boards enact such a policy. I think it could be handled very nicely by an administrative rule. However, the state government has, in fact, suggested it, and so we've offered it. And that's one of the examples that you have in your packet. I briefly refer now to the process that we use. If we enter into a contract with your school district, we will request first certain information from the district. Once we've received that information, we will start putting together a policy manual for Romulus. We will send it to you section by section. Over a four month period, you'll get the entire first draft. Once you've received a section, we recommend that the administration look at it first so that they understand what's being proposed and they may have some suggestions for you to consider about changes that need to be made in our materials. Once the administration <coughs> is comfortable and has their m review done, we suggest <coughs> again that a board policy committee do the primary review. The board policy committee, if entrusted by the board with some responsibility, can come up with some very good suggestions and can recommend to the full board what needs to be adopted. Once <coughs> the policy committee has done its work, it's time for the full board to take a look at it and hopefully to accept the recommendation of the policy committee. If this all works right, the process will be completed in less than a year. Sometimes, however, things happen. Superintendents have a tendency sometimes to resign in the middle of the project, and that changes your focus from policy to hiring a new superintendent. And the other big one that's happened a couple of times to us is that there is a labor problem that erupts, and that may change your, your focus for a, for a time, and you may have to extend the process out. We'll try to work with you if that happens, even though the contract has some timelines in it. We'll try to work with you if some special circumstance occurs and reach a mutually acceptable stretch of the time. Once the full board is satisfied that the language is as it wishes the language to be, the adoption process can, can go forward. You can adopt one section at a time if that's what you wish to do or you could adopt the whole manual when it's ready to be printed. That's up to you. After you have adopted a manual, it is important that you not have to do this again. And the online policy update service is the way that Romulus can avoid having us come back to do this again in five <coughs> or ten years. We, for a fee, publish all of our amendments to our basic collection online. And if you've paid the fee, you get a password and you can watch what we're doing. And in fact, you can also download what we're doing and we go one step further. We'll send an email to all subscribers across the state alerting them that there is now a new one about a particular topic. You've got the sample right there in your folder of what we did when the school bus policy <coughs> became an issue last summer. It explains what happened, 
It gives the recommended changes, and in fact, <coughs> most districts find that very comfortable. There will be things that are published in the opus materials from time to time that you don't need, and you will decide not to adopt them. There will be other changes that we will tell you are now required by law, such as the Social Security Confidentiality Policy that came out about a year ago. That was required by statute. The state legislature said you have to have such a policy. So MASB published it, put it on the OPUS system, and told folks you've got to have something that covers this topic. Here's a suggestion. I put a price sheet in the materials for you. You can see what the prices are for the comprehensive manual, which is the lowest price manual that we have at this time for your district. You can also see the prices for Opus and the prices for the power service, and I'm now going to briefly address power. Power is an online policy service. We contract with a company in Cincinnati, Ohio, called CTS. CTS puts policies on the web. We now have about 26 school districts policies on the web. It is a good way to cut down the amount of paper that's flowing around in a school district. Now, instead of having, <coughs> excuse me, instead of having one of those big thick binders in everybody's superintendent's office and in the principal's offices and in all the other administrative offices and in your homes or offices. Now instead of doing that, you can simply go online to your website. There will be a direct link to the policy manual. And you can click on it. You can search it. It is very searchable. <laughs> Type in the word vacancy in the first section of board bylaws and you'll get two responses immediately. One about vacancies when a board officer has to be replaced midterm, and one about vacancies when a board member has to be replaced midterm. Easy to find, pops right up, no problem with that whatsoever. In the materials that I've given you, there's a way that you can test drive the policies of other school districts, because all but two are open to the public. Two of them are password protected, which we can do if that's what you wish. Don't know why you'd want to do that, because they are absolutely reachable documents to anybody who comes in for a FOIA request. However, a couple of school districts want them password protected and that's what we've done. Power is available then to you. <coughs> we would recommend that you consider it carefully. It is not a cheap service, at least initially, but over the long haul, it is a very cost effective thing, we think. And we are hopeful that you will give it serious consideration. Power has only been in existence about three and a half years. The 25 or 26 that are currently operating, <coughs> excuse me, are just the tip of the iceberg because we still have 10 that are in various process uh, stages of this process which haven't gone online yet but will be going online sometime in the next 12 to 14 months. And there will be people like you who will be coming to us and saying, hey, it's not a bad deal. We think we should do it. So that's a brief overview of what we are about. And if there are some questions that I could answer, I'd be happy to try and do that at this time. Anybody have any questions? I think you covered it pretty well. Okay. We have everything else here we need. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Moving forward, our, um, our intent then is to um, Work toward development of a contract with MASB, which we'll bring uh, to you in January, most likely. We want to get the process rolling. Um, again, the concern I expressed early on is for um, a couple of our key administrators to part for retirement. Um, we need to have their collective wisdom involved in, in this adoption. Uh, Sherry and I are both pretty new, and uh, we're not aware of a lot of the past practices in the district, only so much as they come to our attention. So. Um, We'll be wanting to get this started fairly quickly, and our goal is to be at full-scale implementation t at, with the start of the 07-08 year. A little on the ambitious side, but um, hopefully we can get that done um, and get things rolling with the new school year. Thank you, Mr. Arbus. We appreciate Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you, Thank you all. One, sure. Something just popped into my mind. <coughs> we have 
some policies in place now. Would you be looking at those as you're going through building a new policy? In other words, you know, most of those we'd probably end up throwing out, probably. Not if they're good ones. But I mean, would you go through those as well as your policies? We will give those a limited review on this particular program that we are talking about with you, which is the comprehensive manual. It's my recollection that your policy manual is kind of a home uh, homemade thing is it was so. something that's been developed internally over many <coughs> years With our and there attorneys, are, I think. right and there have been some that have just rested peacefully for 20 years <laughs> or longer and many of those we're not going to pay any attention to we're just going to move forward and offer you some new material they were updated a couple of years ago were they yeah. and okay. a lot of them a lot of them I think you'll find very similar to what the MASB policies are um, uh, I don't think there are too many, just in, in the experience I have with ours, there aren't too many that are, um, that are dinosaurs or that, you know, that are outdated or anything. I think we'll find a lot of them will be implemented as, um, with the MESP policies. Right. I think they're the same policies of Saginaw School District. Same. Well, how old <laughs> from Saginaw? Because we've been working with Saginaw almost five years. <laughs> yeah. It's taken them that long to complete their project, and it's been an interesting process. <laughs> anyway, if you have five or six policies that are very important to this school district that you want incorporated wholesale, we can do that. We can find a way to put them in and we can massage the format so that it fits our format. That's not a problem. If we get beyond five or six, we'll have to talk about it some more. But right. five we've or six, can we've had we can discussion. do. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Thank you again well very said. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up, uh, uh, I think it was uh, at the early November board meeting, we had a presentation on uh, MSRP and some of our other um, pre-kindergarten programs that are offered in the district. And um, we wanted to collect some more information and give you an update. Um, and we promised December. So true to our word, we have uh, Charmin Spicer and Sherry Pazalu to um, to move us forward with that. Good evening. I just wanted to clarify your agenda says I'm giving you an update on the MSRP program. It's actually my friends and me. And I'll just remind you of the distinction. We have th uh, my friends and me is tuition based early childhood program. MSRP is grant based and the budget is built within the grant so you know that and latchkey is another program and that is producing revenues so we're just paying attention tonight to only my friends and me and as Mr. Weiss said I'm going to give you an update on the status of my friends and me their budget and also I researched three other school districts and their early childhood programs. I'm gonna share information about those programs. Um, so we'll go right ahead and the first thing that we're going to talk about is collections with regard to my friends and me. Because as you'll recall last spring, we tried to improve the effectiveness and we established a new more rigorous collection system. And that system is working effectively my friends and me families are billed weekly and pay one week in advance for their child care. The system that we use when they're behind a payment is their they're informed that their child will be excluded if they don't make that payment. The largest amount that was owed as of last week is was $60 and that family has been excluded until they pay. It's working well. The families are being very responsive. We actually have some families now that are paying in advance so they've adapted to the system. As far as FIA, we have families that part of their bill is paid by the family um, Independence Agency, thank you, Sherry. Uh, what happens with those families is it can take quite a while for FIA to get them into their billing system. We don't wait for that to happen. As soon as they're signed up for the program, then our billing person estimates. We are able to give them an accurate estimate of what they will owe, and they start paying that amount. So even if it takes a month, they're not behind in their share of the bill. So everything is working smoothly. 
With that said, we're going to go now to give you an update on the revenues and the expenditures. Now, we started September 5th, and we're giving you an update up until last Friday. And you can see that the revenue is $31,316. The expenditures as of last Friday were $40,537. So at this time, we're not paying for about $9,000 of what the My Friends and Me program has cost us this year. And that amount does not include any charges for operating the building, for custodial, for maintenance, and um, also not for my administration services or for the billing person that handles that for My Friends and Me. That is not a dramatic change from the uh, budget that I gave you last month and actually we didn't our deficit didn't increase at the same rate that it was increasing so I know that's minor good news but that is the um, situation right now now the research that I did with other schools I think will begin to give you an idea of why we're in that situation I gathered lots and lots of information what I've done is try to summarize it for you in a way that you can start thinking about general areas that you might want to look at as our board um, but I would be happy to answer any questions that you have tonight and if I don't have an answer then I would find the answer out and bring it back to you get that information back to you the one other thing that I wanted to mention that is impacting our My Friends and Me budget is we have new state licensing requirements. It seems like every year those come along and they impact the cost of running the program. The major way they impact it is just going over the requirements, implementing them, making sure we're following the rules. Um, that requires time and energy and costs the district money. It has a potential to increase staff costs. One of the major changes is it requires um, mandatory staff training, but it also, the, those changes tell us how we have to staff the program. We have had to designate lead caregivers for each group of children. The way that I've approached it is um, the staff are currently doing all the things that the lead caregiver does. For example, lesson planning, implementation, assessing the children. But the new thing is that the lead caregiver oversees how their group of children and staff is doing. What we've said is that's just a designation of something that the staff is already doing and we've taken people who meet the requirements and designated them lead caregivers. We've said that it's your responsibility to always have your eye on the big picture and if that needs addressing to manage it and report to the coordinator for support and feedback. What we anticipate myself and Mr. Clark is that the union is not going to agree with our interpretation that this isn't an increase in responsibility. In other words, they're going to say that the lead caregiver should be paid more. That hasn't happened yet. We just instituted this change last week. So we'll keep you posted. But if they do do that, it will cost the program more money. Um, in terms of managing that, discussion and then also if we end up having to pay those people um, higher rates of pay. Uh, it also might require facility changes. One rule is that you can't prepare and serve food in carpeted areas. Well part of how this is going to play out is will they be checking and holding us to that? To be right, quite honest with you I'm not going to go in and start ripping up carpet. Um, at the Burton Center, but you know, it does have the possibility of, of someone coming in and saying, we do have to do something like that. So we're just trying to make sure you're aware of, of things that might be coming down the pike. 
If we move on, the school districts uh, that I called and found out details about their programs were Allen Park, Plymouth Canton, and Wayne Westland. And how I arrived at these districts is Lena Montgomery is our li early childhood liaison at RISA, and I called her and told her what we were doing, and I asked her to recommend out of the 20 or so school districts that she's the liaison with a few that would come close to matching our um, community and, and at what we do in early childhood, and she recommended these three. So I've spoken with all of them. The first thing that we can look at is the program focus for these programs. These programs all focus on preschool education. They do not run child care in their districts, or if they do run that, it's as an extended program, a wraparound type program, and it's not the focus of what they offer. The difference that they, um, that they're of their mission is that they're there to prepare the children to be ready for kindergarten. The focus of our program is daycare, is child care. And it's not that while we do that, we don't prepare the children or help them get ready, but we don't do it according to a set curriculum. We don't employ uh, certified teachers in our child care rooms. Um, so there's some of the differences. It's more expensive to run preschool, but we'll get into the fees and how they base their fees uh, further on in the program. But you can see that each one of those districts offer half days from either two hours or two and a half hours each. And the way that it's set up is that the parents enroll for a couple days a week. It's not every day, all day. Now, some of the programs also offer a wraparound so that if a parent does need care, they can sign up. Like at Allen Park, they can sign up for extended care. Um, Plymouth Canton, they don't have extended care. She works very closely with the community um, daycare providers. They refer children back and forth. The director there meets with the community daycare providers three times a year so that they can take care of their community. But Plymouth Canton does not offer that extended care. Wayne Westland, they offer it, but they don't do it through the district. The uh, contractor pays to offer the care in the Wayne Westland School District. Then with us, we don't need extended care because our program, My Friends and Me, starts at 7 in the morning and it runs to 6 p.m. It's considered all one program for children who are enrolled there. Up until this year, it's been, it's run year round. It hasn't stopped. You know what I mean? It, it's not even a separate summer program. It's been um, just, it's always there. This is the first year we haven't offered um, care during winter break and spring break. So you can see that we've really been accommodating to whoever might need daycare in the community. The next thing that I'd like you to focus on and compare is enrollment and billing. This was a really uh, different, the other districts take a very different approach, which is much more cost effective. And I found out details that, like which um, district had what kind of software to run their billing program. And I'm just telling you that because every director I spoke with was very helpful, very accessible. Anything that we wanted to follow up on or even have them come in and talk with you, they'd be very willing to do that. A lot of the districts, or some of them, have gone through a thing where they changed what they were offering their community. And they had to weather maybe a year of complaints and concerns as they went through this process. In Allen Park, the parent, well, in all the programs, the parent signs up for the year, for their schedule. And then in all of the other programs, they add up that total and they give them a payment schedule. In Allen Park, they pay an equal amount every month. That's just their total divided by nine. Um, if they want additional care, then they pay extra, but they pay that fee every month. Plymouth Canton, they make one or two payments, and in Wayne Westland, they make three payments in one year. So you could see how that would cut down on the cost of billing. 
Um, in our program, they pay a week in advance. And they can change their schedule. So they might be going Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and the next week it might be Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So um, our program is very user friendly, but it requires a lot of time and energy to keep up on top of that. And it also doesn't guarantee us a set amount of children or income so that we have to have the staff there, but we don't necessarily get the fees to pay for that staff. Uh, the next thing that we can look at, that's another very different situation, are facilities and revenues. All of the other programs share facilities. The closest we came to um, our program was Wayne Westland shares their facility with their whole special ed department. So that was just two, that's two programs sharing a building, but still they have all their special ed services, social workers, psychologists. They share it with Head Start as well. Oh, okay. They pay in that uh -huh. in Okay. Um, so they all share. None of them pay overhead, but as you can see, Allen Park and Plymouth Canton, they earn money beyond um, paying for their costs. Allen Park, uh, $50,000 a year on average, and Plymouth Canton, $70,000. Um, the last four years, now Plymouth Canton changed their focus of their program about five years ago, and they didn't immediately have that kind of revenue. Wayne Westland pays for itself, but it's facing a similar situation to our district in that um, the director there told me that next year they're cutting all their preschool busing all of it for their MSRP, their early childhood, they're not going to have any busing at all. So they're having to really look seriously at making um, cuts. Then our program, as you know, we're the only school district um, program in the Burton Center. Head Start is also in there. Um, and we, we are enabled. My Friends and Me doesn't have any um, extra revenue to pay overhead and we're operating at a deficit. What I tried to do is break the fees down and what is offered between Wayne Westland and our community. Just to give you something to look at um, specifically, Wayne Westland offers two and a half hours of preschool. So let's say that you're a family that signs up for that. It's $13.64 um, per session. It's run by the district. Now, let's say that you need more than two and a half hours a day. Their outside contractor will take care of your child. They'll come get them from the preschool classroom, bring them down to their classroom that they're renting from the district, um, and take care of them. The children bring their own lunches. They don't prepare lunches. They do prepare snacks. They will bill the family by the hour. Um, but, but you can have a total eight and a half hour day. If you did have that, you would pay an additional $28. So your total fee for a day, a full day, of preschool and extended care would be about $40. In our program, you could sign up from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. The minimum required is three hours, but once you've hit six, you're considered full time. And for one day in our program, it's $26. We also bill by the hour after the three hour minimum is met. We provide snacks and lunches for the children. So that starts to give you an idea of um, the situation. To sum up the differences that you might want to start thinking about um, as areas to examine, offering preschool, versus daycare, offering separate programs, so preschool, latchkey, extended care, but running them as separate programs that each are expected to pay for themselves versus offering a full day. Then also setting the tuition fees based on the actual cost of what you're offering versus what's been historically done with my friends and me, which is here are the fees we've been charging, should we raise them, and not really, you know, 
making sure that they cover the cost. And then also sharing a building uh, versus having our own building that we use for early childhood. The last thing is I gave you, and this is of course in your packet, um, Plymouth Canton is the only one with all the early childhood info on the website. That's why I didn't offer you the other websites because it isn't all on there. But if you'd like to just check out how this all plays out in reality, you know, what the sessions are, what they offer, the parent handbook is on there. Those are the um, websites for the actual preschool and then for their extended day program. I hope this is helpful. I Thank think you. this will be Thank something you. that we look at moving yeah. forward, you know, yes. uh, with our budget concerns for 07 08. It's good information. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank uh, you. Moving along to uh, items of interest from the superintendent, we have a, um, a lengthy list of things here tonight. Uh, we have a number of building newsletters. Um, also, thank you to the Blue Ribbon Committee at WIC. Um, some of you uh, attended a little bit of those activities last week. Uh, the visitation committee came from uh, Taylor and, uh, is it Randall Elementary? Yeah, sure. Again with an R. I think it was Randall. There is a Randall Elementary there. Okay, I think that's where they came from. They were, uh, they were very impressed. A number of us went over uh, midday just to listen to their report. And uh, that's kind of our, our school's, uh, you know, chance to um, show the committee around and say, hey, what we wrote up really is happening in our school. And uh, we had a number of staff members that, uh, that came in on weekends and evenings to kind of spruce up the school and make sure things were looking sharp, and they really were. They, they did an excellent job. Um, and with the committees, you know, the committee indicated to us that they were, um, they were very impressed, so hopefully things are moving right along as far as their blue ribbon process. Um, and Mr. Dolan, I didn't know if you wanted to add anything to that. The, I, I met with the director of the state blue ribbon uh, a couple days later, and he said they were recommended to be the Wonderful. He's in Great. It's quite a distinction for this community to see blue ribbon schools, and I think we were the only blue ribbon school in Wayne, in Wayne County. So that's great. Big That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's great. Great. Um, Again, you have newsletters from uh, uh, all the elementary buildings. In addition, um, there's a Van Booster fundraiser on uh, uh, February 3rd uh, at the Outback State Steakhouse. Uh, um, if you uh, if you can't make it, they encourage donations mm. also. Uh, really? In addition, Romulus Elementary uh, has a fundraiser yeah. <laughs> at uh, Fud Ruckers. Uh, on the 20th no, of December. It was in the, Did you uh, get the band booster? I don't get the band booster. You know, I, I, it wasn't in my packet either. Okay. I have a copy. I'll make copies for you before Great. you leave. Oh, yeah. uh, must have That's been an oversight. Yeah, I got one. I, I knew I didn't all about it. The result. Did you didn't get thing. the band booster one? Yeah. We didn't get it. Okay, well, I'll make some copies real quick. Oh, yeah. before, before <coughs> I don't have one here, but I did get one. In addition, I want to call your attention to item number nine, the Center for Public Education. Thank you very much. Um, uh, website uh, recognized again Romulus Community Schools and teacher Chris Gonzalez uh, at Wick Elementary for her body 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 body, body phonics program. Um, I'm glad I didn't have that slip when I was saying Fuddruckers. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> I thought about it. Um, and there was a nice little write up. Uh, I think it's the last item I in your packet. I thought I was spit it out. <laughs> um, with that said, I'm going to uh, turn the floor back <laughs> to the board president. Okay. Actually, we kind of skipped over communications and expressions from the public. I don't have anything in front of me, but did anybody have any questions? I, I gather we have students out here today. If any of you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask them. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't be shy. Just we wanted to give you the features. opportunity because I know a couple of you come in a little bit later, so. Okay. What was the big issue being discussed here? The oh, it's updating our policies. Anything else? Okay, now we'll go to 
questions. Did you have any, anything else? Okay. Um, next, we have questions and concerns from the board members. Anybody have anything tonight for us? I just wanted to uh, kind of feed off uh, Mr. Weiss's comments about uh, WIC. I spent the morning there and uh, went around with some of the people from the uh, outside districts, and they seemed to be very impressed. I was very impressed. I thought the uh, principal and her staff and anybody else that she had help did a tremendous job. Do we have anything else tonight? No. If not, I just want to, uh, from the board and everyone, to tell everyone out there to have a good holiday, um, a good beginning of the new year. You know, we've got a couple more weeks of school left, and then we'll be off for two weeks. I know that makes all the students happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh -huh. so anyways, we just wish everybody good holidays and safe travels if they're going anywhere. And other than that, I don't think we have anything else. We'll got to go into executive session, am I correct? Mm -hmm. So we will need a motion for that, please. Madam Chair, if we're not going to have anything after the executive session, can we get these students' papers and sign them before we go? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, we can do that. Just let us go into executive session first. Madam Chair, I make a motion we convene into executive session. Support. support. Okay, we need roll call, please. Who got the support? Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. Okay. Roll call. Ms. Frayer. Present. Ms. Buckley. Yes. Yes. No. yes. yes. <laughs> Ms. Buckley. Yes. Ms. Cooter. Yes. Ms. Lanasi. Yes. Ms. Minkiewicz. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. And Ms. White. Yes. Okay, there will not be any uh, further. Nice job, Chairman. <laughs> Yes. Okay, we need to make a motion Madam to come Chairman, out of executive I session, please. I'd like to make a motion that we reconvene in regular session. Support. Motion by Mr. McCabbage, supported by Mr. Kuderick. We need roll call, please. Ms. Freyer? Here. Ms. Buckley? Yes. Mr. Cooter? Yes. Ms. Lanasi? Yes. Mr. McCavitt? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. I'm I make a motion we adjourn. we adjourn. Okay. Support. Motion by Mrs. Lanasi, supported by Ms. Buckley, to adjourn from this meeting. <laughs> Do we have any questions? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion. Oh, adjourn. that's funny. Mm -hmm.